sky is falling. We better do something quick about global warming. They said there is no data to back this up. I don't know who's giving them the data, but it is a politically motivated sort of an argument. Yeah, it's absolutely politically motivated. It's not science. Right. It's it not is. the truth. And so the real scientists just say, I, I don't get that. They just, in fact, Essex and McKinder claim that many scientists just get out of the argument because if they say anything, they're ridiculed. Right. All right. Oh, the, the, oh you're fringy. You, you're a contrarian. You, you're not getting with the program. If you're not with the program, you're a quack and not a real scientist. Exactly. A real scientist would discover this to be true, like we have. Yeah, but that's not the way it really is. So we have what they call official science. And global warming, the doctrine of global warming is true because official science declared it to be true. So what's official science? Is it science? No. It's panels put together when non-scientists need to decide something that requires expertise, and so they come in and they testify. So rather than ideas being debated and put through rigorous tests, and theories are tested against the real world and, and by people who are capable of looking at the work that's been done, you get a political process going, and here's what McKintrick and, and Essex say. So a political struggle replaces testing an idea. That's what's going on. That's official science. And official science has told us global warming is true. Everybody believes it. No credible person doesn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Humans are causing it. And we must do something, and we must do something globally, so we've got to get the whole world together on this, and we've got to quit producing carbon dioxide. Now, I wrote an article before on this, after I read Al Gore's book, Earth in the Balance. Reading that book, I realized that he's operating from a neo-pagan worldview. Sure. And he believes that God is in everything. In fact, he said the universe is like a hologram, and every little piece of the hologram has the whole within it. It's a panentheistic worldview. And Gore claims that humans have launched a holocaust, he uses the term holocaust, that we have launched an onslaught against the environment, and it's like a holocaust, and that we need to create a Marshall Plan, like after World War II, to rebuild after all the damage we've done. Now, how did we do this? What was our evil sin? What was the wickedness that made you and I and every other human like Hitler? We just lived. We're just, we're just eating food, heating our house, <laughs> cooking our food, driving our cars, breathing the air. That makes us evil, wicked persons who have launched a Holocaust-like assault against the planet. Now, hasn't Gore referred to this as the great sin we have sinned against Earth by producing CO2. Yeah, he, that's his definition of sin, is humans being alive on the Earth. And, and so, as I pointed out in that article I wrote for Christian Worldview Network on this topic, uh, Al Gore's definition of sin is something we can't repent of. How do you repent of creating CO2? How do you repent of breathing, inhaling, exhaling, yeah. respiration? Yeah, for the, maybe for some of our listeners who aren't, haven't studied chemistry... When you burn a hydrocarbon, and God created the world we live in in such a way that there's hydrocarbons everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oil's a hydrocarbon. Wood's a hydrocarbon. And when you burn a hydrocarbon, if it's a very clean burn, the purest burn will give you, as a result, carbon dioxide and water. Those are the two byproducts of any burning of hydrocarbons. Even the purest burn? Yeah the, yeah, the cleaner it is, the more you get nothing but CO2 and water. And by the way, I studied chemical engineering, and I was a junior in chemical engineering when I became a Christian, right, so I, do, I understand these things, okay? Good, because you're talking to a communications major with an English minor, so it's good that they were explaining this a little bit. <laughs> okay, so that's why we talk about breathing. Our body burns hydrocarbons for us to live, and so the product is carbon dioxide and water. And that way, you, if you breathe on a mirror, you see the water vapor. Yeah. It's because you're burning hydrocarbons. Okay, so the global warming doctrine says that carbon dioxide is the problem and putting it in the atmosphere is polluting the atmosphere and is going to create future global warming. So therefore, 
It's a sin to do that. You're sinning against the environment, but you can't repent of the sin because it's impossible to be alive as a human without producing CO2. Sounds simple enough. Yeah, so what are you supposed to do? Where do I'm going to ask you that. Where do we go from here? <laughs> what happens? Well, Todd, you need to start feeling more guilty. I feel worse than I did when we began this show. I'll say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, you, so you create guilt in people's minds because they believe it, and so they think, well, I've got to do something. Like the doctrine says that these uh, authors are talking about. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Ah. So, well, I'll go get an electric car, or I'll uh, take the bus, or what have you. So you can't really quit doing CO2. You just do less. But the radical, deep ecology and really radical environmentalists say that really what needs to happen is most of the Earth's population needs to die. Is that? Uh, sorry. There's people that have come out and said that. Most of them won't admit that, that, that they were thinking that way. But the fact is there's six billion plus people on earth every single one of those persons is a net producer of carbon dioxide more or less if you live in a little hut in a remote village and you heat your water with burning wood you produce less if you live in a developed nation you're going to produce more because you're more efficient at using energy in other words you're using gas and natural gas and what have you. Are you saying that their goal is to reduce the population, or is that a goal? Of well, theirs? in Gore's book, his goal is to stop it right now. No more people. Okay. You know, oh. stop population growth altogether. That's in Earth in a Balance. But the radical people think that there, really there should only be maybe, so I've seen different numbers, 200,000 humans or a couple million humans. On or, the entire Earth. Yeah, they don't want the humans to use the fact that they're rational and they're created in God's image as an advantage over any other species. Sure. Okay. So being industrialized, we're using our advantages. I'm not saying everybody believes the, the radical version of it, okay? No. But it's out there. But this is birthed in a pagan world view. And I believe that this global warming, which is a myth, is created for the purpose of promoting a pagan worldview. Because Christian beliefs they see as a terrible threat. Well, I'm sure they do. Right. Because, for example, what did God say in Genesis? Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Fill the earth, subdue. And Al Gore defines that as a sin. So we got a question, is Al Gore going to define sin, or is God going to? I, I think we'd better let God define what sin is. Exactly. Now, maybe we should talk about some of the science. Let's do. This hockey stick graph that folks have been talking about, and maybe our listeners may not be aware of it. Uh, let's talk about that. Okay. Actually, that was on that DVD. What was the name of the DVD? Global Governance or Global Warming? Yeah, good DVD. And they were showing the hockey stick thing, and there's a whole chapter about it in this book, Taken by Storm. And, and these scientists created this hockey stick graph that's been flashed all over the world that makes it look like, oh, wow, in the last 100 years, the temperatures have shot off the chart. Mm-hmm. Before that, it was just perfectly flat. Okay? The curvature of the stick equals the output. The uh, the intensity. Well, the temperature. Right. Yeah. Suppose the temperature of the earth, which they also point out is a myth. You can't stick a thermometer under the earth's tongue and say, oh, there it is. Here's, here's the temperature. Right. Far but, too many variables. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that, too. But anyhow, there's the hockey stick graph. So one of the authors of this book, Ross McKittrick, and another scientist just took the data that these guys who made the hockey stick use the calculations, all of the same stuff, and then just tried to reproduce it, okay, which should have been done a long time ago. But before that was done, the U.N. had already adopted this thing, and it was it was taken as proof. There's policy. Yeah, here's the smoking gun. Mm-hmm. This shows that we that we have global warming, and it's going to be catastrophic, and every all these bad things are going to happen. So these two scientists just went back and just used the, the data and the formulas and everything used by these other guys, 
and showed that they had made serious errors and there was no hockey stick at all. They've got a uh, a baseball bat. Well, they've yeah, they've got different a graph, but it doesn't show a radical change in the last hundred years. Right. And even their data isn't correct. But just using their data, you don't get the hockey stick. And this was so amazing that they were called to testify in front of Congress about it. So the hockey stick was debunked. 